Today is August 9th, Wednesday, 2017. It is day 202 in the Donald Trump White House regime. The delusional Donald Trump says that America will win this hundred-year war on drugs. Yes, we've had many delusional people in positions of power. And I know that this has been overused. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. Now, you can actually apply this overused cliché to not only the people who use the drugs, but to the delusional leaders who spend our tax dollars trying to fight the drug war. They're both delusional. Who has to pay for it? All the people in between. All the regular folks. folks, All the normal tax-paying folks. All the people who have a real job have to pay the price. It's pretty much obvious to a fifth grader that we're losing the war on drugs. It's a lost cause. Funny how we can always trace these bad laws, these bad things that happened to America, we can always trace them back to around 1913, 1914. About the same time that our masters created a Federal Reserve banking cartel and they took over our money. That's really what catches my attention in this world of tyranny that we're experiencing. America is a land of tyranny. I wish we had video of the people who lived back in 1912, 1913, because we could get a good read on what was wrong with those people. There was something wrong with Americans in 1913 that they they had to give our money, had to give all our banking, the power of banking, and give it to a foreign power. And, of course, it's not a coincidence that the, the laws on drugs started around 1913, 1914. This is not a coincidence. Now, I realize that Donald Trump is not a sophisticated man. He knows golf courses, country clubs, and reality TV shows. So it really is our job as Americans to teach him. Reach out to him and tell him, Donald Trump, you are delusional. We are not going to win a hundred-year war on drugs. The prohibition does not work. Humans will always find a way to get high. I mean, they'll sniff glue, they'll sniff paint, they'll do whatever it takes to get high. They'll drink rubbing alcohol, for God's sake. The prohibition on alcohol proved prohibition doesn't work. What 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 should we do if we were fighting for real Americans? Well, we would fence them off. If you wanted to do drugs and you ran out of money and you could not manage your life, then you would be exiled, quarantined in an area that was fenced off where you could not hurt the public. You could do all the drugs you wanted to do in there. And you could literally commit suicide. Real Americans don't give a shit. That's what it's come down to. The taxpayers do not want to pay for this tyranny. Paying for the judges and the prosecutors and the police and the prisons and the rehabilitation centers. I mean, we're spending billions and billions of dollars that we don't have. Okay? So, they're going to do it. These druggies are going to do what they want to do. So, once they run out of money and their life is unmanageable, then we take them to a quarantined area, fenced off, where they cannot get to any public people. And it will not cost the taxpayers very much money at all. They'll have to be in there. When they want to give up the drugs, they come to the fence and they tell the person who's guarding the fence, okay, I want to give up drugs. And then they come back in. Maybe there's a hospital that can help them. But putting them in prison is wasting our money, wasting our assets, wasting precious time of police, prisons. It's just a total waste of time. And any leader who thinks that the war, the war on drugs is winnable, they are delusional. Now let me clarify, because I'm sure there's some Bible thumpers out there. There's some 70-year-old Bible thumpers. Their brain's not working properly, and I have to, you know, go into further detail. Now, of course, the laws of using drugs, The laws that make drugs illegal to use, those all have to be done away with. 
total waste of taxpayers time and money what but if you use drugs and you drive a car well then there's a penalty sure again if you use drugs if you drink and drive there's a penalty you should be prosecuted if you hurt somebody if you use drugs and you hurt somebody of course you have to be prosecuted the prison would be a lot less filled okay if we just focused on if you hurt somebody now if you or have enough money, if you have a job, you have enough money, and you can manage your life and smoking weed and get the job done, you don't hurt anybody, no crime done there. But if you go to the hard drugs and you lose all your money, before we let that person hurt somebody, they should be quarantined off, fenced off into an area where they cannot hurt anybody. Again, drugs would be legal. It would be purely legal in a free society if we were truly free it would be okay you could use drugs as long as you don't hurt anybody if you want to hurt yourself which will eventually happen then you're going to have to do that in a quarantined area fenced off you see now i'm not going to go into you what part okay we got lots and lots of government land Lots and lots of government land. We can fence off an area, throw them in there. When they're ready to get clean, they come to the fence, and we let them out of the fence, and we let hope, you know, guide them to getting clean. But as long as they want to commit suicide doing drugs, they're going to have to do it outside of normal society. The prison system doesn't work. No. Prison system is evil. Put them in an area where they're, it's a, a fenced-off area. Sure. All hell will be going on in there, but that's their choice. It's a free society. See, this is what the Bible thumpers don't want. The Bible thumpers don't want you to be free. No. For 100 years, the Bible thumpers have been telling you you're nothing but a slave. Hell, to the Bible thumping preachers, you're worse than a slave. According to them, you can actually use nukes on the people in North Korea. Yeah, if you're an evil person, God gives Trump the authority to drop a nuke. Uh, we won't go into that. Today, if we visit a quasi-government CIA offshoot agency and do a search on Donald Trump, we see that they're only going to allow us to see 13.3 million results in 0.56 seconds. Looks like they did a pre-dawn raid of Manafort's home. Pre-dawn. We're going to talk about that more in a moment because that is alarming. What else are the top stories? Trump's threat was improvised. Sometimes he says things off the cuff that, you know, he doesn't realize they have lots of meaning and he probably should not say them, but he's learning on the job. Now, this is how far down America's gone. Everybody in media, they don't even know, the people in media don't even know the Constitution. It says there, could Congress stop Donald Trump from bombing North Korea? The... The people, it, we blame it on the public school system or mainstream media is, they're, you know, they're just trying to manipulate us and brainwash us. Most people know that Congress is the only person who can approve war. So it's not that Congress can actually stop Donald Trump. Congress is the only entity allowed to even create war. Only Congress could allow any bombs to be bop, bop, dropped on anybody. But now mainstream media wants you to think, oh, the President of the United States has the power to destroy a nation. That's dictatorship. How far down in America have we come where mainstream media, this is almost probably treasonous. We are in a territory now that mainstream media is on traitorous, treasonous grounds where they are trying to brainwash America to think that the President of the United States can destroy a nation by dropping a nuclear bomb on there, when the Constitution clearly says that only Congress can approve war. This is how far we've come down. We've had some sort of foreign power take over our country. They've stepped on the Constitution, and they're using mainstream media to brainwash the masses. This is treason, isn't it? We are li literally living in treasonous times. A foreign power in bed with mainstream media. Treason. There's, there's no other word for this. Treason. Now, one of the main reasons why Americans voted for a non-career politician is because we know all the career politicians are blackmailed and compromised. 
But Donald Trump has turned into sort of like a chicken. He went with, he's a scared of our masters. And he's also saying something stupid today. Let's go back to this page here because I, I don't want to miss this. Donald Trump says, Hopefully we will never have to use this power, but there will never be a time, there will never be a time that we are not the most powerful nation in the world. Now, if we learned anything from the housing collapse, or if we studied history and the tulips collapse, you never say never. So Donald Trump is just making too many mistakes. He, he's really trapped in this thinking, you know, he cannot think outside the box. He's 70-some years old, and he cannot think outside the box. No, America will not always be the most powerful country in the world, because you never say never. Things change. I mean, there were people like Sam Harris that said, Donald Trump has no chance of winning. Absolutely no chance. Sam Harris said. I had to make a video on it and correct Sam Harris. Of course there's a chance that Donald Trump will win. Even way, way back then, I thought Donald Trump was 50-50, even better than 50-50. That was in probably a year before he got elected I made that video. So yes, we've got, we cannot get caught in a trap to thinking that housing will never collapse, that the tulip bubble will never collapse. That America will always be the most powerful nation in the world. We've got to think outside the box because this is wrong thinking. To, for Donald Trump to think this, this is wrong. And somebody needs to correct him. Somebody needs to send him a memo. Yes. Be careful. you gotta, you got to treat people good. The reason why you treat people like you would like to be treated because you're not always going to be on top. And if some new dog comes up, if some new heavyweight champion comes up, well, it'd be better, it's just better if you treat people nice. It's better if you treat people the way you want to be treated. Now, we have not been doing that lately. I'm sad to say that the American empire was taken over. It's now called the American Zion Empire, and we have been extremely, extremely bad. I'm being very, very nice. When I use the words... We have been very, very bad. I'm being very, very nice because there are far, far superior words I could use. Okay, let's see what Ivanka Trump is up to because she's tweeting after her father tweeted the fire and fury nuclear talks. Well, she's plugging her book. Let me see what it might, here's my thoughts on the subject. If your daddy plans on becoming a war criminal, it's probably smart to keep a low profile and keep quiet. Plugging your golden Trump brand is probably out of line. So, you know, these Trumps, like I say, they're very arrogant. They don't really think very well. I know now why they've hired a public relations firm to help them think. The problem is, they're so stupid. They're so arrogant. They're so stupid that the public relations firm they hired worked for Hillary Clinton. Now, you know, Hillary Clinton was so bad. People thought so lowly of Hillary Clinton. I mean, whoever was Hillary Clinton's public relations firm, I mean, that's the last public relations firm I would ever use. She was the worst candidate ever. She literally had the presidential office handed to her on a silver platter. All she had to do was keep her mouth shut. So hiring the PR firm, hiring a PR firm that, that helped Hillary Clinton lose, I mean, that's how stupid the Trumps are. I mean, if you're going to hire a PR firm, at least hire somebody who knows what they're doing. I mean, I'm not going to go into it. Shit. Okay, what else is there here? Huh? Okay, Jared Kushner. We, don't, we cannot forget that he, they constantly break the law. Remember, mainstream media is not going to focus on his family, you know, telling the Chinese, yeah, invest in the Kushner Real Estate Foundation and you'll get a visa. We don't want to forget that they're still breaking the law. Okay, let's get to a big story today. It's a big, it's a big story. I don't really totally understand it. That's why I want to talk about it. Now, the, we find out that the FBI did a pre-dawn raid of Paul Manafort's home. Now, don't get me wrong. If the Trumps and his 
Minions are doing something wrong. Investigate them. Prosecute. But a pre-dawn raid, he's probably got a nice house and nice neighborhood. Why do you have to do it pre-dawn? I mean, it seems a bit obsessive, uh, excessive. Matter of fact, it is excessive. It only proves that there are two types of people in this country. You got the 99% of us, or us Gentiles. And if we do anything illegal, trust me, they're going to throw the book at us. If you, you know, do any insider trading, years in prison. But if you're one of them, if you're part of their tribe, if they get caught, they usually don't get caught, but if they do get caught, it's probation. This is why America is having so much problems, because there's one small group of people, and they're all from the same tribe, and they can literally get away with anything. Jared Kushner, I mean, I could name you name after name after name. If they do get caught, it's probation. But if you're a Gentile, they throw the book at you. This is tyranny. So I'm going to do a little comparison. You got Debbie Wasserman Schultz. Now, she hired a couple spies from Pakistan to work in Congress. Now, apparently, I don't even think they had a security clearance. Seriously, do your own research on it. The Awan brothers did not even have a security clearance. They were working with possibly up to 80 congressmen, giving them blackberries and spying on their every move. This is treason, isn't it? Now, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it's the FBI's job to investigate treason. So you've got Debbie Wasserman Schultz, who I believe is still walking around the marble halls of Congress like she's on top of the world. And, well, her workers, the Awan brothers, her spies that she paid to spy on Congress, they tried to flee the country. I think most of them were able to flee the country. But one of them got caught fleeing the country, one of the Awan brothers. Now, okay, they arrested him. We still don't have a mugshot. Still, mainstream medias could care less about this treason. But my thought is this. Wouldn't, if you're talking about treason, if you're talking about spying on congressmen, I mean, it doesn't, it does not get any worse than this. Don't you think that would justify a pre-dawn raid on Debbie Wasserman Schultz's home? You see where I'm going with this? There's never going to be a pre-dawn raid on Debbie Wasserman Schultz's home. There's never going to be a pre-dawn raid on Jared Kushner's home. Because they can get away with anything they want. Now let's go to the Gentiles. I mean, all you have—I don't, you—you you don't have to do much to be a Gentile. And trust me, the SWAT team will be knocking down your door. Now I have to admit, I don't have all the information, all the details, but you just have to use your imagination. Do you think that Manafort was involved with spying on Congress? I doubt it very much. Do you think Manafort killed somebody, murdered somebody? But here we are. Uh, this was a message. The deep state, the people in charge, and we know who they are. I mean, if you listen to me enough, I hope you know who you're, who's in charge. If you don't, then please go do some self-medicating and watch the Kardashians. I mean, look at this. Paul Manafort. Look at the results. 185,000 results. The FBI does a pre-dawn raid on this man's house. Did he... Did he spy on the senators? Did he spy on Congress? Has he done anything that even remotely comes up to treason or traitorous? Now let's do Debbie Wasserman Schultz, the Awan brothers, pre-dawn raid. 820 results. Missing. On the Google search, it's missing, pre-dawn raid. So I was just checking. I mean, you're talking treason here. You're talking spies in Congress. You're talking traitorous, treasonous bitches. Was there any pre-dawn raid done on any of these people? No, no. They caught him at the airport fleeing the country. Do you think that there was a pre-dawn raid on Debbie Wasserman Schultz's mansion the next day, the next morning? Hell no. I hope I'm making my point here. This is what's wrong with America today. Two sets of laws, one for us and one for them. And 320 million Americans sitting around with their thumbs up their ass watching the Kardashians, baseball, basketball, football. And they don't even worry about it until their son or daughter has to be thrown in the slammer. Their grandchildren thrown in the slammer for 
absolutely hurting nobody while Debbie Wasserman Schultz can spy on Congress. It, it does not get any worse than this. I'm not, you know, I'll, I, will, I will beat this dead horse until the last, until Debbie Wasserman Schultz is arrested. Yes, I'll keep on yelling and screaming at the criminals. I'm not optimistic that they'll be arrested. No, Debbie Wasserman Schultz will go into retirement. She'll have a good life. Okay, I know Donald Trump is on the golf course uh, working vacation, but let's check out the White House. There might be something interesting there. And oh, lo and behold, there is something interesting right across the street from the White House. What do they call it? A massive inflatable chicken with golden hair. Yeah, this is what's staring at the White House. I wonder who put this together. I don't have the details, but it's, well, it's becoming an item. It's becoming a tourist attraction in Washington, D.C. I wonder how long they'll let that stay there. Probably as long as Donald Trump is on his working vacation in New Jersey on the golf course. So let's wind this segment down looking for some interesting news. It says here that North Korea threatens an attack on Guam. I would say that's a load of nonsense. We really do have two delusional, arrogant psychopaths, narcissists going at each other, don't we? We have the tubby tyrant in North Korea, and we've got the golden one in America. It's insanity. It literally is insanity. I, I, I like to call it a dog and pony show, a circus, but this has gone beyond dog and pony show. We are in the realm of insanity. The tubby tyrant in North Korea going up against the golden one in America. And Congress sits around like, you know, they've never even heard of the Constitution. The gulag. You know, you heard about Google firing that kid. He had different thinking. His ideology was different than the Google executive, so they fired him. The gulag. You talk about diversity of ideas. We do not have a diversity of ideas in America. They talk about diversity. They don't have the first idea about diversity. The secret history of the banking crisis. How long can the system be propped up? That's probably the most important question you should ask yourself every day. How long can the banking system, the Federal Reserve banking cartel, how long can it be propped up? Because that's what's going to make a difference in your life. When it comes crashing down, that's going to be the most important question question the important moment of your life we talk about it here quite a bit that's why you don't that's why you do not give a foreign power authority over your money the federal frankenstein yeah the federal government has grown way too big they gave our government they gave our money to a foreign power i'm not going to go into that no more 6.5 million people chose to pay the tax instead of getting Obamacare. Is Bitcoin money? No. And you want me to prove it to you? It's not going to be money until Bravo Vamula accepts it. Let me give you an example. I have a garage. I have a garage sale, and I have to sell all my worldly belongings to eat. And somebody comes up to me and says, Bravo, could you take Bitcoin for that valuable item there sitting in the corner of your garage? I say, no, thank you. I'll take money for now. And did I tell you about that huge factory that broke ground in America today that could employ 10,000 American deplorables? Did I tell you about that? What do you think the answer is? 